Welcome. Today we're talking about episodes five and six of Berlin Alexander Platz. And in these episodes, um, Franz Bieberkopf has come home from his long bender and he's kind of refreshed and, and um, feeling a little bit more solid and he comes back to his, his old rooming house or his old apartment and um, he's got a steady job and he's doing pretty well and as happens when uh, somebody in his situation is going steady he starts to be a little seduced in a sense um, and uh, he falls back into uh, sinful behavior for lack of a better word and uh, and he meets somebody named um, named he's drawn to this person named Reinhold who gets him involved in uh, in this very bizarre uh, interaction with women where he takes over when Reinhold gets sick of a girlfriend he takes over the girlfriend and this happens a couple of times um, and uh, the women are really kind of just treated like objects between them and um, and Franz Bieberkopf he's he's still trying to stay afloat from this this kind of black pool of sin that he keeps falling into and he, he kind of trying to rehabilitate this Reinhold guy in a way but this Reinhold guy is really so far gone he's almost uh, He's kind of on the edge of being almost like a, a serial killer or, or a, he's on the edge of like murderous intentions when it comes to these women. Um, there's another character that comes to play named Pooms, who is, um, we can tell that Pooms is a, is a gangster um, and has a, a kind of retinue around him or a crew that works for him. And uh, But I've never been quite sure whether whether Franz Bieberkopf understands that this guy is a gangster if he actually believes that he's just some kind of fruit dealer. Um, so he, he begins to get involved with, um, with this Pooms character as well, and um, Pooms keeps trying to get him to join his crew, but um, Franz has enough... Uh, he has some kind of instinct about this Pooms guy, and, and um, he's satisfied with his newspaper selling job, even though... It doesn't bring in a lot of money. It just keeps him afloat, and it keeps him on a, a steady course. Um, in episode uh, six, the next episode, he, he does, uh, through a series of circumstances, he does end up becoming involved with, with Pooms. Um, and it's, it's not really clear whether this is an intentional um, act on uh, Franz's part to become involved with this this guy, or if it's just all kind of circumstance, but um, but in the course of of this um, of this involvement with him, he gets he becomes involved in a robbery, um, and he he acts with surprise when he finds out it's a robbery, and um, I think he thought he was just going on a fruit delivery or something like that, but he he says that he can't be involved in it. Um, Reinhold is there. Reinhold drags him back to be the lookout for this this robbery and um, before this Franz has told Reinhold, Reinhold that he doesn't want to participate in this constant chain of women that are taking over when when he want when Reinhold wants to get rid of women and Reinhold is kind of bitter about that so during the robbery there Reinhold is kind of forcing him to be the lookout then they're leaving in a car um, they're leaving the robbery and Reinhold throws Franz from the back of the car and Franz is run over um, and um, really grievously injured a couple pulls up and take and finds Reinhold and puts them in in in, uh, in their puts him in their car and he doesn't want to be taken to the hospital he wants to be taken home um, he's still he doesn't want to involve anyone else or he doesn't want to involve the police or be, be a rat or, or something like that. And, and, um, but, uh, on the way at the end of the episode, it's him being driven back to, uh, either the hospital or, or his, uh, his residence. And, um, and he gives this really quite beautiful monologue at the end of, 
at the end of that episode um and uh maybe we can discuss that too later but um so why don't you tell me your uh your take on on these two episodes michael okay uh they're very very intense uh you, in one way nothing nothing until the robbery nothing hollywood happens but uh you are with France and 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 Reinhold and these women. You you realize uh, as Reinhold is proposing this this bizarre, as you said, uh, activity. You, you slowly realize that Reinhold is absolutely disgusted by women. Cannot resist his desire for women is, as you say, on the verge of being a serial killer. Uh, and and France, for all the things he's done, I mean, he the, the episode five begins with him getting his old flat, which is the flat in which he killed Ida. And, and, uh, There is this childlike thing in him. You see, on the one hand, you easy to see him as a brutish sort of person, but he's really an innocent. He has a great deal of trouble believing the world is the thing it is, and he knows that he has sinned. He's killed somebody. And, and he tries to do the right thing in every circumstance that he's in. He tries to make the right decision. He tries very hard. And he has these flights of thought. It's not that he's very smart, but he is very deep. And that's a very interesting combination. I've seen it in life. It does exist to be not that bright in terms of having an agile mind and at the same time very deep uh, in, if you like, a spiritual sense without even knowing. Asking the big questions. Uh, contemplating, uh, aware that something enormous is going on. It's much bigger than we are and, and, and uh, uh, and he, Franz is constantly truly looking through a glass darkly and, and uh, 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 very aware that he's a nothing and at the same time he's a part of something that he doesn't understand and so that question of of how will I live given that I don't want to die? That's posed at the beginning. It's constantly in front of them. And the, the uh, technique is you're in his room, you're in these closed spaces. Uh, there's one daylight exterior in this whole thing, really, that shows a street in two hours of film. And uh, and you're stuck in the room with these people. It's quite extraordinary, really. It gets claustrophobic, but and and it gets uh, uh, what I call trailer park, which is really derogatory. But <laughs> and and I apologize. But it is these endless arguments over the same thing of people who are trapped with each other and cannot escape. And, and these endless discussions over the same thing. And with France and this, this, uh, this child of women that, that Reinhold is giving him in effect, uh, and he, France, Reinhold has 
just enough conscience to want to give the women to France instead of just turning them out in the street. Now, um, but to finish my thought, and I go on to another one, you're in the room with this, and you're quite close to them. The takes are very long. Uh, it's like being in a theater, and there's a and and it's very long between scenes of the change of scenes, and you can't leave. You can't go to make a phone call. You can't go to the bathroom. Anything. You can't get up. You'll you'll upset the the the. Uh, the, the piece of the theater, it'll distract everybody. And uh, so there's this intensity that builds between the viewer because you're in the room. And by the end of the first episode, uh, uh, there's a grim weeper in the title, Franz realizes he's doing something wrong. The woman silly is about the third woman that he's taken from, that he's accepted from Reinhold. He calls him a bigger bastard than Reinhold. Look what he's doing. And, and he realizes, and he says to Reinhold at the beginning of the next episode, uh, they're all people, even broads. And this is a revelation to him. That's what these women coming and going have taught him that they're people and 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 he's very happy to realize this he doesn't want to give up silly that's c-i-l-l-y uh he doesn't want to give her up he's not going to do it he's not going to accept another woman he's gone that way from being a pimp and killing uh the woman he was with, who was a prostitute, to realizing, no, this is wrong. <laughs> They're all people, even broads. Given the very low place he started from, that's quite something, actually. And then in the next episode, we see that Reinhold is insane. This, this, uh, this disgust he has, this desire he has, this ruthlessness he has, he's insane. And, and, uh, France is, is, uh, suspicious of this, finally. Uh, France's friend Merck, 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 whatever that guy's name is, knows it, seems to have more intellect than most of these guys, and sees clearly. But Merck, is working for Pooms. Reinhold is working for Pooms. Franz doesn't want to see ugliness. And he doesn't want to believe that all these guys are in Pooms' crew. He believes it all has to do with fruit. He accepted that. You'd think he'd know better with his background, but he doesn't want to see it. And when he gets involved through this series of circumstances, uh, let me go back a bit. Just before he gets involved, he has this extraordinary dream that he tells Silly. He's a bird on a branch, and there's a snake. And the snake is coming closer and closer, and he can't fly away. And the snake bites him, and then he flies away, but... He's been bitten, and there's no getting around that. And it is, uh, she, silly, realizes the meaning of the dream and says, it's not just a dream, this is important, and tries to talk to him about it. So there's been, there's a self-examination beginning on a different level than we've seen. And meanwhile, it's 1928, uh, we know when it's April 1928 that uh, the, the uh, that's flashed upon the screen, and we know that uh, that in October 1920, you know, just just a year and something later, uh, 
the depression is going to hit the whole world, beginning in Wall Street and going on from there. And I, I, that information, I'm not sure. It might be a, an important date in German history. I don't know when it was pushed was in uh, Munich. Uh, so uh, two points I want to make as we go on this journey, uh, because it does captivate you. It, 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 the first episode is one of the most depressing things I ever saw. And, but it does, uh, you see France's innocence. It's not, it's not redemption, but it is innocence. But these people are at well, what's probably the next to lowest level of life in Berlin, which the documentary said was a city of 4 million people at the time. There is still a system to steal from. Uh, this is a mechanical world, as, as the world was well into the 1970s, even the 80s. And that means that it takes a lot of people to run it. And there's still truckloads of food coming in. There's, uh, there's more prosperous classes. There, it takes a great deal of work for a city of four million to exist. Uh, and so life is going on in that way, uh, all around them. We're, we're looking at, I would say, the second lowest level. The next lowest level, you can't make a film about. Uh, and, and this, this underworld, this underlife, where even there, there is a yearning, and Franz is the, is the emblem of it, and some of the women, for redemption, for light. And I got completely involved in it. <laughs> uh, and I found it somehow buoyant because of the intensity of the life. France ends up, uh, the way he falls out of a truck is very interesting. We cut to, even even the outside scenes in, in the night are confined. You don't really know where you are. You can't see 20 yards. Uh, and it's that dark. But we cut to a well-to-do couple in a car and and uh, the woman is egging, and they're in their twenties, probably, or maybe thirties. The woman is egging the man to drive faster, drive after that truck, drive fast, see if you can go faster. And he says, "You don't have to tell me twice." And they've probably been drinking, lots of drinking in this. Everybody's drunk all the time, and it is that this random car is following the truck. After Francis realized, oh my God, I'm with thieves. Oh my God, I'm the lookout. Oh my God, what a fool I've been. I've been hoodwinked. Uh, uh, this car is playing in effect with the truck. The truck gets really scared. They go faster. Reinhold is, and, and, and Franz are in the back of one of the trucks and then there's a car, I think another truck maybe. And Reinhold panics, he's sweating. And he pushes friends out the back. The car with the couple runs over friends. And and I don't know, I've never seen this before. This friend's dead. Uh, they think he is at first. But then he revives and doesn't want to go to the police. And, and one of the things that's happened is Silly has gone to the bar because he hasn't come home. And, and, uh, and Reinhold is back at the bar. Uh, with palms of the gang, and Rhino tells her Franz is dead. And she is so shocked and probably drunk, certainly drunk actually, that she lets him boff her in a men's room stall and then take her home. And he says, makes a comment, oh, it's been long enough now, I can, I can stand to touch you again. Not to her, but to himself. And so life goes on and we're building an Alexander class and you, uh, you become, become amazed that it can go on. <laughs> and 
And underneath it all, and I did not see it at first, I didn't want to see it in a way, there really is a stream of life. Uh, somehow some stream of pure water flows along with all this, with all this filth and, 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 and ignorance. I got actually very involved, as you can see. <laughs> so that's my take so far. Yeah, do you, have you started to kind of recognize a pattern that's occurring with the, like Franz Bieberkopf's journey? It's a, what I'm seeing is a circular pattern of ascent. He has a job now. He's seeing that women are actually people He's understanding that he's been pushed around. But tell me more about this pattern because you know more about this than I do. Well, I, I think that uh, in each two episodes, the first episode is kind of him steadying himself and getting on kind of an, a more of an even keel. And then the second mm -hmm. episode, he, and then during that episode, he'll he'll start to become seduced, in a sense, either by mm -hmm. his ignorance, his karma, or or his uh, his um his want of sin, I guess, or or his his animal self, um, mm -hmm. and um. And then t towards the end of the of the second episode, he'll he'll uh, he'll go through something really awful, and then come to his senses. And it seemed like, and this is like the third time it's it's happened. I think in in the episodes yeah. <laughs> that we watched, right? Like in that, yeah. you know, like in the last two episodes, he goes through that whole drunk phase, and and. Uh, Mm -hmm. kind of goes meets up with that Satan guy and, and, and goes through this kind of metamorphosis with that guy. Um the right. the character Reinhold in this one is really like the devil. He's like an irredeemable Oh yeah. Uh, he he's more like an irredeemable uh like a like a human that's been taken over by sin, by by evil and, yes. and can't redeem himself. And he's and he even goes through that whole thing where he goes to the Salvation Army and, and like Right. Talks about how he's tried to actually redeem himself. You can see that he he as he was falling into sin, he 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 went and tried to to deal with it by going to the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. But when they start singing, he has to leave the room, and and split and and Bieberkopf, you know, kind of follows him and says, you know, like why don't you go back there and go sit at the sinner's table or whatever they call it, <laughs> and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, so France is really kind of trying to, uh, to, to, uh, he even says it in, in you know, uh, toward the end of the, of the second episode, Reinhold comes up to him and says, uh, what are you trying to be a physician with me or something like that? You're trying mm -hmm. to, and, and, and Franz is kind of saying to himself, yes, I'm, I'm trying to educate him and, and trying to help him or whatever, you know, and, and, um, he's so he's deluded himself so much that, mm -hmm. that everybody can be saved, right? Like, he, he really believes that, that everybody has a spark of goodness yes. in them. And, um, well, he has that, he has that, he has that uh, conversation with Merck in the bar in yeah. the beginning, more or less the beginning of the second one we saw, where he says that Reinhold was part of his own education and that he's in control, I think no that, matter what it looks like. Yeah, I think that that's like a weird translation he's he's saying that that he's educating reinhold i think right but um but yeah that's true that it is part of his education too but in like a deeper sense that he's got to believe he's got to understand that he can't save everybody right because i think that's exactly. his outlook exactly. that's his outlook right now mm -hmm. is, is like everybody's got a spark of the divine in them and and everybody can be helped and saved or whatever um and he's he's kind of in this really like brutal learning curve um throughout the entire series um 
and and especially yes, and Ryan, even during the. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Even during the robbery, he doesn't is not admitting to himself yet that it's a robbery. Right. Yeah. Like one of the guys tells him something, and he laughs. And, he, and the guy gets angry. Why are you laughing? And he says, "What's it to you if I laugh?" Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he says it with a smile. You don't see rancor in him at all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The whole and, the whole little little part right before he gets thrown out of the car. He's he's laughing and like looking at the bright side of the whole thing. <laughs> yes, no, it, it, and it really, on the one hand, he seems to be an emblem, a personification of the part of society that really just doesn't know what's going on at all. <laughs> Takes it all uh, on yeah. on surface because all they want to do is live their daily life, not be bothered, not bother themselves, and and just live. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that, except that it gets you in a lot of trouble. You walk into a lot of crossfires. Uh, and, and, and it's as though he, he is that spirit of, of Germany that's just trying to live and do and, and, and get through the day. And and be a little bit happy, and and have a job, and you know, have a room and enough food, and and, and like that. Yeah, I think that uh, there, there's a. I think that Doblin is is kind of trying to get that a, across in a sense of um, Germany is just trying to be German, and they just keep getting mm-hmm. hassled by everybody. You know, like they just like they they're trying to. It's like every country has a right to be to their own self determination, and mm-hmm. and Germany just keeps getting. I mean, it depends on what you know. A lot of people think Germany started World War One or something, which is I I don't believe that at all. But like, uh, it's like there's this something in the way that won't let them have self determination and and won't just let them be who they are, which like isn't Mm -hmm. like some psychopathic warmongering group of people you know they just like want to be german and and do their thing and everything but i i do think that that's a kind of a a part of it there's this weird national kind of identity thing to the to the entire thing but um the one thing that that uh I, i i asked myself why is he attracted to um why is he attracted to reinhold in the first place, mm-hmm. like, that was a big mm-hmm. question with me, with and and uh, and I think that the dream, when he explains the dream, I think that there's there's something in there where that kind of explains it because he starts out the dream by saying, "I was a horse, and I was taking mm. I was taking right. the right. the." Uh, I was taking the the goods to the marketplace as as a horse, and I but I was alone. Mm-hmm. I was on my own. Um, so it, it's kind of like he has this steady job, and he's 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 doing what he's supposed to be doing, um, and but he want he says he yearns for the warmth of the stable, right? And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I think what what he's really getting across there is that he wants to be accepted by other men and he wants to be, mm-hmm. he wants to be a part of something with other men. Like he's been rejected or dejected by the communists. He, he kind mm-hmm. of ejected himself from national socialism because I think a, a big part of that was that, that Jewish guy confronting him and saying, you know, like I'm Jewish, you know, like what's your problem, you know? And, and, the, mm-hmm. and, and he's such a, Bieberkopf's character is such that that he's like I don't want to offend anybody or hurt anybody or you know right, like right, that's right. his whole trip you know he's not thinking you know in in big abstract concepts about you know Zionism or something like that he's just like I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings man you know like so he he ejects himself from from national socialism um, so really the only milieu that he can find acceptance in is this this pub atmosphere with mm-hmm, with mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. 
where Pums is is kind of in the leadership role, um, mm -hmm. and um, and you can kind of see that where when he's interacting with Pums for the first time, and Pums is like, "Yeah, I sell fruit, and and you can be one of my fruit sellers mm -hmm. and stuff." You know, you can see a real pleasure in Bibrakov that that he's actually interacting with this guy, and he's right. he's doing man stuff. You know, like he's he's doing mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. with other men, and and you know, and and like as 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 human as the women are in his life, they're all kind of they are kind of cheesy. You know, like they're they're kind of mm -hmm. mindless, and and um and he wants to be he wants to be accepted by other men and be a part of a fraternity, right? And he's just come out mm -hmm. of jail, and, yes. and he's a misfit, and he's also kind of like a toddler too. You know, like he. Mm -hmm. he, wants, yes. he wants to be very childlike he wants to be accepted by the other guys and the big kids and mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so I, I think that that's I don't think that that totally explains his attraction to Reinhold but I, I, I think that that explains the dream kind of so he he, 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 he finds himself uh, he, he, he wants to be a part of that stable you know but then he's the part mm -hmm. about the bird and, and the snake and everything, like obviously Reinhold is the snake. I, I I don't really have an interpretation of. I guess he says that he's a bird because he can, he has the choice to fly away, but right, something right. is transfixing him about Reinhold, and I don't think that that's been like totally answered yet. Reinhold has kind of a like a vampiric, hypnotic thing going on with him very much so yeah very much so yeah um so i think that 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 i think that was my interpretation of the dream um and what did you think about like did you ask yourself like why is he because there's that whole scene in the pub where he he, he sees reinhold and, and he's immediately like kind of transfixed in a way by this guy like did did you ask yourself why he was attracted to him i did it, it uh i think the vampiric image is dead on i think he was a person with a strength of personality with a purpose with uh, uh, an obsession and he seems on the surface purposeful rather than uh, what he really is underneath which yeah. is obsessive and compulsive okay yeah uh, he, can't, he can't help himself but on the surface he seems purposeful and personally powerful uh it it uh i think it's i think it's how how psychotics can often fool people because they can seem quite charismatic they can seem like they have it all together when actually uh they're in the service of their own demons and 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 uh, are quite it's not physically dangerous socially dangerous and and Franz, who just takes people as they come and never judges anybody, uh, and in this sense is kind of a holy fool that that uh, uh, that you see in every religion uh, has uh, a tradition of holy fools, including tribal religions. Uh, kind of holy people who don't know they're holy and are working out of motives that they're unaware of and yet they're connected to something divine very very directly more directly than most people and and so he is naturally drawn to this particularly evil man who is drawn to him he sees him i mean he seduces franz into this idea 
in much the same way he'd seduce a woman. Uh, and uh, promising him this and that. And, and, uh, and Franz, because he's, Franz's reasoning is, he's my friend and I should help him out. Before he realizes that the women are actually people. And, and he falls into this cruelty. And when, when Silly tells him you're worse than he is, you're a bigger bastard than he is. And he goes, oh, I don't want to be that. I won't be that. <laughs> I mean, it becomes clear to him and he makes that choice. Uh, but he's in a set of circumstances that, that, uh, that uh, always are going to bring unexpected and unintended opportunities to fall. You're in that level of society. Uh, there's nothing safe about it. One of the interesting things about all this, and I don't know if it's true of the novel, is that we don't know the backgrounds yeah. of really any of these people. So these women seem, uh, they're not peasants, they're urban people. Uh, which would mean in Germany at the time they come from maybe the lower middle class or the respectable working class. We don't know how they fell in with these men. We don't know anything about their background, how they got to the place where they could be treated this way. Uh, and we don't know anything about the men. Uh, for instance, Reinhold seems to be educated. So does Merck. Uh, they seem to have more, more, uh, and definitely poems. They seem like educated people, educated in terms of the time and place. Although at the time, Germany had the best public education in the world. Uh, yeah, I think that the, the, and, the, uh, the fact that this book was like the, one of the biggest bestsellers, uh, probably before like uh, 1950 in Germany, um, says a lot about the literacy wow. of, of Germans, <laughs> you know? Yes, really. Um, <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I think it was, <laughs> That's the, impressive. I think it was the biggest selling book of like that 50 year time period. Yeah. Wow. They made another movie of this. They made like a, a movie of it in 1930 or something. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. But what you're, you're saying about not knowing the backgrounds is something that I was just going to bring up, which is who was Franz Bieberkopf before he went to prison? And was he, yes. was he this, this unstreet smart before he went to prison? I don't think so. I think... Uh, like, what, it, it just seems we, to me like he could have been, like, the type of guy that would know that Poems isn't selling fruit before, like, something happens to him in prison that just kind of wipes his mind clean. Because there are scenes of him in the first think, couple of episodes where he's in prison yeah. and he's going crazy, right? And he comes out and he's, and he's, right. and he's totally off balance and everything. Well, uh when he goes to his old apartment that this woman has been paying the rent on. Yeah. Uh, and she seems like a successful prostitute. She has money. She says paying the rent is nothing to her. It's just a tiny bit. And she, he was her pimp. And he says, uh, and he says he doesn't want to do that anymore. And she says, no, no, no. She's obviously on some kind of you know, maybe she's in a high brothel now or something like that. Uh, but she's got money. But he was underworld. And then I think the the, the turning point in his life, because we, we see it, but we don't understand it, is when he kills Ida. We see it in the flashback. Uh, and he's in prison, and he's uh, in isolation a lot. 
and he 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 goes mad when he's let out in those first scenes he's out of control totally he's he's just uh you know like a pinball it yeah. just got sprung into the yeah. into the game yeah. bouncing bouncing yeah. bouncing <laughs> yeah. uh and and uh and any conversation can turn him any way and then he he uh, there's that basic question that you see him ask himself, not in so many words. How do you live if you don't want to die? I mean, you can always get out of it. You can always die. But if you decide not to do that, you want to live. How do you live? With almost no resources and all these limitations. And, and so it seems to me that the killing of Ida and that he would, and the whole symbology of she, the woman who he was pimping for, keeps the apartment open for him. I mean, it's just so, where you sinned is always there. And it's up to you to purify it. Yeah. Huh. He was speaking in those terms. Where you sinned is always there, it's not going away. The rent is being paid there. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's interesting. You have to go and purify it. It's interesting how there's that giant piece of machinery in the middle of the room all the time. Yes. <laughs> it's, really it's like, you know, like this horrible incident has happened there, and it's like, it's always there. You know, it's like the elephant in the room. You know, it's. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Did you, uh, did you begin to notice the musical cues in, in this episode? Yes, yeah. yes. Sometimes they're very strange, sometimes they're very light. Yeah. Uh, and sooner or later I'll, I'll get the soundtrack album if it's available. Uh, it's on I'm, YouTube. I'm interested in that. Yeah, it, but um, there's, I mean, there's very as you keep watching it and I only noticed this this time around watching it there's very definite like instances where a certain the certain musical cue repeats itself you know like the mm -hmm. echoing piano mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like right when right when Reinhold uh, right when he strikes the deal with in the bathroom with Reinhold you hear the like mm -hmm. that echoing piano very faintly in the background and then right, right. when the first girl comes over it gets like really, really loud, like when they're going to bed, you know, and, and he's like coercing yes. her into bed, and it's it's a weird, like surreal kind of like swampy piano, but it's very insistent too, you know. It's like you're mm -hmm. singing, mm -hmm. Franz, you're singing, you know, like you're 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 like falling mm -hmm. again, <laughs> you know. It's like <laughs> tapping him on the shoulder and telling him, and uh, and when he's like right on the edge of doing something bad he there's like this uh this flute music that starts playing and um yes yes yeah it's it's very interesting and uh another thing i noticed was that there's a, this guy in furs that that keeps showing up in the background right like you, mm -hmm. you remember mm -hmm. the scene where where there there's a guy at, at the bar arguing with the bartender about how many drinks he's had. And he says, you know, I've only had seven drinks. And the bartender says he's right, had eight, right? right? And, and he's in first, but he shows up just before he meets, he meets Reinhold too. And then he shows right, up again right. and he's with, the next time he shows up, he's with that guy, um, the guy from before that wore the white, smock like the white butcher smock that was running mm -hmm. around saying mm -hmm. have you seen the man in furs have you seen the man in furs you know like and i right. think that i think that whole man in furs thing um it it's referring to his animal self and 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 uh and um and Franz giving into his his like animal lusts and and uh and his instincts as opposed to his intuition you know and um I don't know, that's kind of my take on it, but I thought that was kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's also, uh, 
radio broadcasts that are in German, so we don't understand them. But occasionally when he's hawking the papers, labor government in Oslo falls. Uh, there's something about a foot race. There's yeah. a black man, an American black man in the bar at one time. Yeah. And then this guy starts telling a joke about an American black. <laughs> it's, and, it's a terrible and, uh, joke, but it's pretty, uh, pretty so, funny. Too. So there's, there's some sort of leaking in of the other of the rest of the world yeah. but it has no impact on anything that these people are doing even though he's selling newspapers that you'd think would give him some sort of uh, headline after headline some sort of idea perspective something but uh, but they're just things he's giving away he doesn't care really he gave away the Nazi newspapers. He didn't care. <laughs> it's just uh, it. it uh, uh, yeah, it's interesting. All he cares about is it gives him enough money to live. Yeah, it's interesting. The uh, the little I don't know if they're reminders or what if they what significance they have. But the yeah the the uh, like kind of current event stuff that is inserted mm-hmm. into it. Um, like the one part where he's when he's hawking the papers and he's giving out the the headlines and he says uh, the yes. labor government in Oslo has fallen or whatever you know like it's kind of what significance does this have and what or is it just you know to to tell that there's something going on outside of this this uh, cauldron that he's he's involved in you know? and it's it's a particular kind of government the labor government. In other words, the socialist government yeah. in Oslo has fallen. Yeah. Uh, you know, they make a point of that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, the, another thing is is the uh, the the voice that comes in every once in a while. Yes, right? <laughs> and it's quite spooky. Yeah, <laughs> and you wonder and, oh, who it is. And it's... sometimes it's it's reciting Old Testament verse. Yeah. Sometimes it's just reciting a kind of poetry yeah. and 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 I think or it's reciting like a, a random newspaper article or, or yes like prices of, of meat or something like that <laughs> yeah and I, I think it's kind of an inner voice not not Franz's inner voice is not what Franz excuse me is hearing but it is a uh a reflection of his inner life, yeah. vague, uh, weighted, uh, unspecific but ominous, uh, kind of beautiful but but uh, unpleasant. Well, the, the passage from it was here. the only thing I could make of it because I've, I've played some of those passages several times. Yeah, well, I and, think the passage and, uh, from Jeremiah is is apt. To, to the to what's yes, going on yes. for sure. Um, there's uh, he he says an, there's another thing that he said. I think they play it twice where he's talking about the this black pool in the middle of the forest and there's like there's a storm going on in the forest and there's animals and and uh, there's a, kind of like a, a right fo- and people oh. under the canopy of leaves aren't aware of it. Right. Yeah, and the black pool isn't touched by it. it right. It stays the the black pool. Yeah, and that's a that's yes. an interesting one. You know, it, it's it could be talking about two different things. You know, it could be talking about his his immortal soul that isn't that's going to stay the same and 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 isn't going to be affected by by this storm going on around him. Or it, it uh, I don't know. It could have some kind of other sinister meaning to it. Um, yeah. It does give the, without getting specific, because you can trip over meanings like crazy and something like yeah. that, but it it does give the sense of, of, uh, of, don't get fooled by appearances, very deep things are happening here that are out of everybody's control. Yeah. Because there's also the, the voiceovers of, there is a grim reaper whom God has given to whom God has given the power of death, and he and the reaper has not yet begun to reap, but soon the reaper will begin to reap. You know, and you have this stuff, and he says twice, I recall, in in uh, episode five, and 
And, and that's the Grim Reaper is in the title of that. And yet you don't see anybody die. So, uh, uh, it's, you know, I haven't seen the film. I haven't read the whole film. I haven't read the book. But it seems like a long curtain raiser to the war. Yeah, I, I think that that Grim Reaper, thing, I think it's talking about karma and, um, and how it's mm-hmm. going to make parts of Franz Bieberkopf die off um, and, and mm-hmm. kind of how it's, it's forming him. Um, you know, like death isn't always a, doesn't always mean something bad. You know, it's like he's, right, he's right. going to be reborn and, and, uh, and, and being reborn doesn't happen in the snap of a fingers. You know, it's like this process of him, of him growing. And, and I think that, that, uh, that final monologue that he gives in the, in the car as they're as he's wounded and driving away i mean you you would expect him to be you know uh in pain and and uh woeful mm-hmm. and, and uh talking about how awful life is but he gives this like super uplifting monologue about life and yes. and how like even though we're totally insignificant and like the sun is yes. 300,000 times bigger than us or something um I still walk out into the street and 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 I and I feel I forget exactly what he says, but he says like I feel strong and I feel I feel like uh, I'm a you know I'm a part of something. And he says um, there are forms and colors that you can grab and there's lines that you can see mm-hmm. and and we should be mm-hmm. grateful for this. <laughs> that's, that's so beautiful, you know, like just the that that monologue is. Uh, is really really beautiful what he says there. You know, well, I think I think next time we should start with that monologue. Yeah. yeah. Talk about that monologue some more. Yeah. Uh, as we get into the next two episodes, because uh, I didn't give it enough attention. Yeah. Uh, I wrote down a bunch of it, but but yeah. uh, but but as we started to talk this morning, I forgot it. Yeah, and when you mentioned it again, I went, oh yeah, the monologue, right? Yeah. He's the sun and the universe and the thing. He's just been run over by a car, <laughs> uh, <laughs> thrown out of a truck and run over by a car. And oh yeah, the monologue, because uh, that's really important, unexpected, and yet it's absolutely in character. That's what really struck me about it. Yeah, uh, the, it, the, it is the pain on the like, one hand. Yeah. In each episode, you know, in the, at the in the second of each episode, he 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 pays off some like giant karma that he has, and then he like kind of mm-hmm. has a revelation after that. Like things become clearer to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna make a note in case I forget one. Before I watch the next one, I'm gonna rerun that that speech because yeah. I think it's very important yeah. that that. Uh, all of this when he's finally just thrown in the street and run over the first thing he has to say is this yeah you know the audacity of the writer to to conceive of that and and pull it off is something i admire tremendously the writer man it's something Uh, that every time we do these i'm i'm just uh I'm blown away by Doblin, you know, by by this guy who wrote mm-hmm. this, and um, it, it's hard to find very much information on him. And, and uh, I mean, there's a good, there's a real good Wikipedia um, thing on Alfred Doblin, and tells you a lot about him. And he ended up going to Hollywood too, and I guess like a lot of those guys, right? Like when the Third Reich occurred, he like went to Hollywood and. and and I guess he just couldn't stand it there, and he went back to Berlin or something. But uh, interesting guy, like extremely interesting guy, and and and, uh, and yeah, I'm just kind of uh, amazed by him and, and um, how he put together this story. You know, it's um, it's very esoteric and and occult in a sense. Um, yes, yes, very deep. you can feel the pulses of that. Yeah, but like you said, I you know. Like usually after we do one of these, I watch the next two episodes, but then by the next week, mm-hmm. I, I'm like, there's a bunch of stuff that I can't remember 
from the, those episodes, and I have to watch them again just before we we do the thing, because the, the, there's just uh, there's things that need to be noted, you know. And the, yes. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Well. Uh, yeah. We'll start okay. out with that next time. And yeah. Well, this is really fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you came around to. Uh, yeah, I resisted it, I, as you as you felt, but but uh, but uh, when you said no, it does this and this and this, I went, I gotta see this. <laughs> okay, if he says it does this, I gotta see this. Yeah. And and you're right. Now, this is a whole uh, uh, a very strange journey, structured and performed with meticulous. Uh, detail and attention i'm very impressed yeah i wanted to say too that reinhold the actor playing reinhold is pretty amazing too everybody oh he is he is fantastic yeah yeah Yeah. you began to say something everybody everybody in it is pretty good but um is very good but um but yeah i just wanted to make note of of reinhold's performance um very strange actor, very strange looking, unique actor. <laughs> but, um, yeah. It is a volcanic quality in the performance. It, 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 it is, uh, it, it, things coming up from the depths, uh, and yet w- with the precision of a master actor, it, it, and he never makes anything look forced. You really look like you're seeing it. I mean, he trusts the director completely. And he trusts what the director is seeing through the camera. Because you've got to have such a naked performance, you've really got to trust that director and that camera. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, uh, yeah. Okay. We can talk more about that. Yeah. Okay, man. <laughs>